Hello everyone in Cardio Minds channel and with a new span of video related to the essential medications in heart failure and today we are speaking about prescribing sodium glucose transport 2 inhibitors. As we mentioned before our main reference is the supplementary data of the 2021 AC guidelines and these are the main questions that we are going to answer today for the SGLOT2 inhibitors. From the video of the pharmacotherapy of the heart failure, we know that dabagliflozin or embagliflozin has class 1 recommendation in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction in order to reduce the risk of heart failure, hospitalization, and death. And both belong to the family of SGLOT2 inhibitors that act on sodium and glucose reabsorption in the renal tubules inhibiting them. So the first question, why do we prescribe these medications in heart failure? To improve symptoms and exercise capacity and also to reduce risk of hospitalization because we are speaking here about significant diuretic and natriuretic effect that can reduce the need for diuretics and also to increase survival rate and here SGLOT2 inhibitors have significant mortality benefit. The second question in whom and when we prescribe them. The main indication here is in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction regardless of diabetic status so we can prescribe them to non-diabetics because here we are speaking about cardiological benefits but what are the main contraindication first of all pregnancy and breastfeeding period are contraindication because safety is not proven yet in patients with allergic or adverse reaction to SGLOT2 stimated GFR less than 20 is a cut point to prescribe SGLOT2 inhibitors and also in patients with symptoms of hypotension or systolic less than 95 and we need to emphasize that in the DABA-CKD trial the enrolled patient with estimated GFR more than 25 so that's why here the cutoff point for GFR is below 20 in which it is contraindicated to prescribe them and there are some situations in which we need to be cautious while prescribing SGLOT2 inhibitors like type 1 diabetes which is not an absolute contraindication but here the risk of diabetic ketoacidosis should be taken into account when we start them. And also the glucosuria, which is caused by the SGLOT2 inhibitors, which inhibits the reabsorption of glucose in renal tubules. It may predispose to fungal genitourinary infections, especially in females. That's why we need to tell the patient to report any symptoms suggestive of urinary tract infections. Also, there are some drug interactions that we need to look out for, like insulin and sulfonylureas, which may predispose to hypoglycemia if concomitantly prescribed with SGLOT2 inhibitors, and also the cyzides and loop diuretics may predispose to excessive diuresis and dehydration, which may result to hypotension and pre-renal failure. That's why when we prescribe SGLOT2 inhibitors, we may need to reduce the diuretic dose. The third question, which and what dose? We have so far two medications approved in the heart failure, which are dabagliflozin and embagliflozin, with the same starting and target dose of 10 mg once per day, as this is a dose that was studied in the clinical trials approving them. Regarding the setting in which we prescribe SGLOT2 inhibitors, it is in stable heart failure patient as an outpatient, and also in patients hospitalized with worsening heart failure, we can start SGLOT2 inhibitors after stabilization before discharge. And now with some of the recommendations that we need to check before prescribing SGLOT2 inhibitors. First of all, we need to check this line kidney function as we have spoken about a cut point of GFR to be above 20 to start SGLOT2 inhibitors. We need to monitor blood glucose regularly in diabetic patients due to the risk of hypoglycemia if it is prescribed with other antidiabetics and in some susceptible patients we need to identify and eliminate the risk factors that may predispose to ketoacidosis after discussing with the endocrinologist and after starting SGLOT2 inhibitors we may need to reduce the diuretic dose and advise the patient about adequate fluid intake because here's a significant diuretic and natriuretic effect of SGLOT2 inhibitors may predispose to dehydration and pre-renal failure if it is taken with large doses of diuretics and don't forget the specialist heart failure nurse that may educate the patient about the medication and its side effects to report. And now it's time with some of the clinical problems that may face us with GLOT2 inhibitors. 
The joint urinary infection has a higher risk due to glucosuria, especially in females. That's why we need to monitor the patient for symptoms and signs of joint urinary fungal or bacterial infection to start appropriate treatment for them. Hypoglycemia has a higher risk in diabetic patients. That's why we need to check the other concomitant anti-diabetic medication prescribed for them that may predispose to hypoglycemia like insulin or sulfonylurea and modifying their doses after discussing with the endocrinologist. And as we mentioned that dehydration, hypotension, pre-renal failure may occur with higher risk in elderly and frail patients as here the intensifies the diuresis particularly if they are accompanied by diuretic therapy or ARNI and that's why we need to monitor the fluid balance closely with calculation of the urine output if possible and checking body weight daily and we need to balance the diuretic doses with fluid intake sometimes we need to reduce the diuretic dose to avoid these complications as we mentioned before and finally with the advice that we are going to give to our patients we need to explain the expected benefits and tell them that the symptoms may take few weeks to few months to improve we need to reassure the patient that glucosuria is expected in urine analysis because some of the diabetic patients may take it as a significance of bad control of diabetes and if the patient is already not diabetic he may be worried that he is starting to develop diabetes no glucosuria is an expected finding with GLUT2 inhibitors as part of its action and we need to advise the patient to report any adverse effect related to GLUT2 inhibitors like dehydration or hypotension hypoglycemia, diabetic ketoacidosis, genitourinary infections, so we need to educate them about the symptoms of these complications in order to report them early in order to take the appropriate action. And so our take-home messages from this video today, that GLUT2 inhibitors are indicated in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, regardless diabetic status and we need to revise the doses of concomitant anti-diabetic medications or diuretics in order to reduce the risk of hypoglycemia or dehydration and hypotension respectively thank you very much for watching this video and wait for the next panel video for the essential medications of heart failure